Hello, welcome to Common Point Masterclass 3D Exterior Lighting. I'm Artur. And I'm Bartosz. And we are extremely happy you're here with us, wanting to become a better 3D artist. We will do our best to help you get there and to look at the lighting process from a different angle. In the upcoming 27 lessons, you'll get a solid dose of knowledge to understand and execute all lighting scenarios you're watching on the screen right now. Tons of tips and tricks, setups that simply work and all necessary technical details. Also, a unique way to look at your work, to understand if something works or not, to train your eye and use it in a commercial workflow. Today we'll give you a sneak peek to what's coming up next. We'll answer the question of what the lighting is all about, uh, where does it fit in the whole creative process and what kind of tool set you need to do it properly. We are also introducing a new way to look at composition. And a big chunk of this lesson is understanding the composition and its hidden potential and where it overlaps with the lighting. Lots of cool stuff and remember, there's a new lesson coming up each and every month on YouTube for free. You can look up our masterclass playlist to check which of them are already up. But if you bought early access to the whole training, Thank you for your support, we really appreciate it, and either way, have a wonderful journey and fingers crossed for becoming a better 3D artist real fast. Okay, so let's start with something simple today, and the first thing we want to ask ourselves is why do we introduce the lighting in our scenes? Why do we have lighting process in the first place? And the answer might sound a little trivial, but the most important part about it is to introduce the sense of depth. You cannot feel the depth when you are working in your viewport, especially if you don't rotate your camera. It's possible when you move around, and perhaps the perspective and the vanishing points help you with that, but only when you put the lighting system into your image, it truly gives you some depth. Any given image has only two dimensions, width, and height. But when you apply the lighting, you can kind of feel the third dimension inside them. You can understand and feel the depth, but as you imagine, lighting is much more than that. Lighting is the very end of our creative process. It's somewhat of a cherry on top of the cake. And before you approach it, you should understand how you got to the stage. You should understand the DNA of your image what's the composition and all of that stuff we will talk about later. Before you approach the lighting, you should understand the goal of it. And the key here is to understand three big components. Composition, lighting itself, and color. Let's briefly talk about them. The first part is to understand the composition. Whether you have something interesting and well-balanced, or cluttered and boring. You should understand the language of composition. What's the key elements, what's your hero object, and what plays the second role. The ability to quickly notice the potential of your image is such an important skill. The second part is technical proficiency. To be able to execute any lighting scenario you wish. You should be able to set up Corona Sun and Sky, HDRI, volumetric effects, you know, it comes with experience and sometimes you really need to be creative to pull it off. And the last part is color, but it boils down to your creative eye, so-called experience. Basically, your eye is the final benchmark for anything you do. You should understand how the natural color is supposed to look like, what's the hues of greenery and the sky, what kind of values work for different lighting scenarios, and don't worry, we'll get into all of these three components in this training. You can train and improve in all those three departments and we'll share many technical tricks and introduce a lot of ways to train your eye. Composition, lighting and color are interconnected. Lighting kind of speaks and negotiates with composition and manifests through color. They bleed to each other and you should know where they overlap. Your image will truly be successful if your colors are on point, 
lighting is technically sound and your composition grabs attention. Those three components are essential and we will get to all of it in the next 27 lessons. Today though, we are starting slowly and touching base on the composition part and where it connects to the other parts. Composition is an interesting part of art and pretty damn difficult to learn on paper. You'll need a lot of experience and at some point it just clicks, but let us come at it from a fresh angle. Let's talk about how the lighting and composition are connected first. Just look, we can have the same scene, same geometry, same camera, but the images are about something totally different. We have different lighting setups in all of them, but we need to be sensitive to the fact that all of them are different compositions as well, even though it's the same camera. Let us elaborate on this idea to really nail down the issue. We have a couple of images here and each and every one of them is about something different. The first image is about the architecture, pretty standard. The second one is about the interior and the living space. The third one gets interesting because it's about the shape mostly, the silhouette and the colors. While the last one is a little bit funky. It's about this particular room here and what's happening inside. A little bit scary, but kind of cool. And what you should take away from this is that those images are not only about different lighting setups, they have become a different compositions as well. Lighting is a part of composition and makes it complete. Lighting can decide what's important about the image and make it really shine. It can remold what the composition and the scene is all about. Let's check a few more examples here. We have another set of images and we can clearly see that they are about something different. Lighting decided what the composition aspects are important and elevated them. If you look at the first image, we can see it's all about the foreground and the landscape. We get a nice feeling about the surrounding. The second one is quite the opposite. It's about the facade material. We have another set here and as you can see, the first one is again pretty standard, regular day shot, but the second one is very interesting. Lighting kind of decided to entirely remold the composition. It decided to ignore all the objects in the scene and make an image about the sun going down. It decided to use the negative space and give it some emotional aspect through color. So. We want you to be sensitive to the fact that lighting influences the composition by a lot. Composition and lighting are not separate parts of the pipeline. They are so much more connected than you might think. And to be honest, you don't need to have such a drastic change in lighting moods to see this effect. Look at this set. We can have the same midday conditions in all four images here. The composition can speak about its potential, but still we can negotiate with it. You know, we clearly understand the composition is about this structure, it's the true heart of this image. And the architecture grabs the most attention on the right, where the rest of this image is kind of faded and makes this picture-in-picture -picture effect. However, in the first image is pretty much about everything. The second one has the fallen tree in the spotlight, so it kind of takes away some attention away from the main hero here. But yeah, you can see where we are getting at, circling back to the composition component. Anything you have in your viewport before the rendering can be changed. It's not the final composition. It takes the sun direction, few shadows, either soft or harsh, to have a different composition. Anything you did in 3D could be presented in one way or another. Lighting kind of sets the stage for your composition. And some of the images work in a day scenario with bold and sharp shadows, and the other ones when you have soft and very elegant shadows. One scene could really pop in sunset and the other one in blue hour. And if you use the same lighting scenarios and same lighting tricks over and over again, you'll stumble upon a composition that 
just won't work. And you dealt with those situations before in your career. Or you definitely will be. You need to experiment with the lighting, listen to composition, and marry them together. The first lesson we want to make and inspire you to do is that if you learn the language of composition, you'll illuminate your scene way better. Sometimes you'll struggle with the lighting and it will be just a composition problem to solve. Soon I will break down the most important aspect of composition itself, but let, let us bring this idea home. You need to be sensitive about composition and lighting and how they are tied up together. You can learn new lighting tricks, but they will fail if you don't know when to apply them. Composition is our compass and it really set you on the right path to success. So we better start to listen to it and understand to read it. Every time we approach a new scene, we can break down the key elements inside. Forms, geometric core, silhouettes, negative space, depth, many, many different aspects of it. You know, the image could be about the architecture, side context, materiality, color, clouds, people, so many different ways to show it. And the beautiful part about it, you can pinpoint every single aspect we just mentioned, analyze them one by one and make a diagnose. Where's the opportunities and where's the pain points? Don't worry, it will make more sense in just a second. We'll try to look at the composition from a different angle now. The way we think is helpful and kind of interesting. Because you might have heard about the rule of thirds, golden ratio, golden spire and whatnot. You know, ways to break down the image into some specific areas and focus on the hidden geometry. And we honestly think they are not the best way to think about composition. And don't get me wrong, they are a good start and it's a tool to investigate and prepare the composition. But not every image can be brought down to the rule of thirds, if you know what I mean. And the way we look at composition is mostly technical and has a slight artistic component to it. The way we view composition is the way we look at the image when we experience it for the very first time. Where it grabs attention, which lines do our eyes follow, where is the tension and where is the breathing space. If the composition works, it should work both as a full-scale image and a miniature. Good composition should simply be satisfying to watch and any composition mistakes will immediately throw us off, even if we don't realize it. So let's dive into composition and listen to what it is telling us. We won't teach you how to build composition from scratch, but rather investigate what is already there in your images. We'll touch base on five different aspects. Shapes, lines, depth, and another two, kind of interesting ones. They are called seemingly uniform surface and negative space. So let's get at it. When you look at your scene for the very first time, you should discern what's visually important. And human perception is really good at it. When we bring the image of Eiffel Tower or Big Ben into your mind, you obviously think of the general shape. We think of the general forms when we look at the world and then break it down to smaller details. It's very natural for us. So you can pretty much do the same with any work you're looking at. Feel free to paint over those general shapes too. In our case, it's the building, rocks and the tree on the left. Those are the elements that speak to us and we can set the stage for them. We can bring them forward or choose to tone them down. We need to be careful about those silhouettes since different lighting scenarios will have some kind of an impact on them. Make them more relevant or not. Just look at this set. You can notice our architecture is very readable in the all of the images as a bigger form. Even though the rocks is kind of a powerful shape, we suppress them and blend them with the rest of the image. Sometimes the tree shape is brought forward, but not every time. Those general shapes are constantly reevaluated when you set the lighting system, so keep them in mind and simply ask yourself, do they need to stand out or not? 
there are many ways to control it in 3ds Max, and we'll get into that in our training. Let's move on to the second composition aspect. Following the lead of shapes, we can simply paint over the lines. You can start with the general shapes, as we did earlier, and add a few lines here and there, just to understand the geometric core in our image, as you can see. And it's really good test if our image grabs attention at the right point. Just look where those lines lead us. Every possible line drive us to our hero. There are also lines and more details around our hero. You are also welcome to explore the rest of the image, but again, those lines will bring you back to our hero again. It's how the geometric core works and many 3D artists are not familiar with it. Happens so often there are some lines driving you away from the main hero, just chaotic. Anyway, break down those lines and decide which of them should and shouldn't be highlighted. There's a tree line here and, you know, it can be punchy or not, which will have some kind of an impact on an image. The bigger the contrast, the bigger the impact. All those lines within our hero could be really highlighted too. So we can keep that in mind and decide how we want to push them. You can easily control all those things in Photoshop or 3ds Max, improve the readability of your image and the sense of depth. Which brings us to the next aspect, the depth. It's an essential part of making an image and it starts with your scene. You should be able to understand where are the foreground, middle ground, and the background. Most importantly, is there a visual continuity between any of them or do they cut off suddenly? In our case, we can visually travel from the camera to our hero. There is no obstacles along the way, which is huge in terms of readability. On the other hand, we have a clear cut between the middle ground and the background which is called a drop-off. It's something we should be careful about. Those contact areas should be carefully adjusted so we keep a nice sense of depth. Foreground, middle ground and the background will have a different roles, importance and various amount of creative freedom. In just the next lesson, we'll elaborate on this idea of the depth, but you can already keep this aspect in mind. Okay, shapes, lines and the depth three different ways to look at the composition. They will be constantly balanced when you set the lighting system and choose the sun's direction, for example. It might sound a little bit confusing at start, but it will become clear and natural when we start rendering in the next lessons. At this stage, just keep in mind the raw form of your image. Every time you approach a rendering, you can ask yourself, does my hero blend with the foreground or not? the background or not, what happens on the intersection of those geometric lines, are those lines screaming for attention, can I visually understand the path from the camera to my hero, or is there any obstacles along the way? Composition skills come with experience, but you can already start asking those questions and looking at them from a raw perspective. Okay, so let's add two or three more composition aspects. The next one is called a seemingly uniform surface. Slightly funky, but hear us out. It's pretty difficult to predict how all the geometry will turn out to be when you look at the viewport. You can more or less imagine the architecture, but there are many surfaces that seem flat and boring in your viewport, and that could be very misleading, especially if that surface turns out to be water or glass. It's super difficult to imagine what's the reflection going to look like. And those seemingly uniform surfaces can have a huge impact on your composition. You will approach concrete ground totally different than a body of water. So you should keep them in mind before approaching the lighting. It's a hidden opportunity and problem at the same time, and you will balance it out later. Another example of a seemingly uniform surface could be a highly detailed surface. Those can be anything from surfaces that have a sand texture or even grass scattering. Those highly detailed surfaces can bring a lot of high contrast noise 
to your image and really bring attention. We will talk about it while setting up the sunset mood. Keep in mind all these reflective or detailed spaces. Be prepared and again ask yourself, are those elements too powerful or not? It can totally change the way you perceive the composition. Okay, the last aspect before we come back to the lighting is the negative space. And the negative space is nothing else than an empty space. It's something that is really empty when you look at it in your viewport. For the most part, it's simply the sky. And you know, there's nothing wrong with having a simple and elegant sky gradient. We get it for free when we use Corona Sun, and it works fine most of the time. But there's a twist here. Negative space can totally change and remold what the image is all about. We have seen it earlier. You can redefine the space using clouds, sun, the mood, and so on. You can even base an image on an epic cloud. If our geometric core is pretty minimalistic, we can always introduce some dramatism in both seemingly uniform surface and negative space. I think we have plenty of ideas about the composition and it's enough for now. All of this understanding comes natural and at some point you don't even think about it, just to be on the same page. It's not like we are painting over those shapes, lines and whatnot in every image possible, but it's rather a tool to break down your images and evaluate the, its hidden potential. There is no need to mark them up if your images are straightforward, but this kind of breakdown is super helpful when it gets tricky. If you feel there is something off about your image, you can go through those elements step by step and again ask yourself, are those shapes, lines grabbing attention too much? Perhaps the general form blends with the background and the foreground details grab too much attention? You should understand the DNA of your image. All those tiny elements are constantly balanced when you set up the lighting and as we said, you can have total control over them, which we'll learn in our training. Okay, let's add one more idea here, and it's not a composition aspect per se, but helps you approach the lighting by a lot. And we encourage you to speak to your client, ask questions and understand the creative ideas behind any projects you visualize. You can really impress your clients if you ask what they are proud of in terms of their design. You can highlight those elements and score some additional points with your clients. And you never know if that wider context brings your images to a place you have never imagined before. So let's quickly give you a basic idea behind our project. And the idea behind the project is a little bit silly, but it works. It is a design that uh, works mostly along with the camera position. So it's lacking a lot of substance inside. There is an appearance of functionality and that's just enough. What's important is that we have two massive blocks that are placed on top of each other, at two perpendicular volumes. One of them on the ground floor and represents the living space for uh, the most part. We have, you know, the kitchen, the dining room here, and everything is open and surrounded with the glass panels. The second block, being the bedroom, is totally hidden, covered with stone walls, to the contrast of the former. You can also notice the windows here are not the usual ones, but rather gaps that resemble almost a cave, but still works nicely with the whole structure in general. Another aspect is the chimney here, which is smaller but stands out from uh, the ground level, and it's something we can highlight later on. And last thing is the terrace, which is pretty huge on the layout, and we can feature this space somehow, uh, even though our camera doesn't show its full extent. So we can have different ways to showcase our design here, either by showing the general shape and small geometric moments, or going a little bit deeper and explaining how people are experiencing it. We can highlight the pool area, terrace area, you know, sleeping space, anything really as long as it makes sense. Okay, so circling back to the composition and the lighting idea, every time you approach the lighting, you should 
think of the composition DNA and ask yourself, what's the topic here? It might sound trivial, but it's really not. Sometimes we just want to produce a nice image, but it doesn't mean it's a successful one, especially if we speak about commercial success. We will have a different view what's successful than our clients, architects, developers, and whatnot. You can have your image about the site context, the materiality, the architecture. We'll approach it differently if we want to show the usage of terrace or the pool. We can have this understanding of objects in our scene later on if they grab attention at the right point or not. Even though we start through the composition, we hope it gives you an idea of what to expect next. Uh, it can be very technical and you can literally paint over your images and evaluate them. And you know, this is somewhat of a simplified version of looking at composition because we can talk about many different things like image aspect, focal length, hierarchy, balance and whatnot, but it should be just enough to understand how it all connects with the lighting itself. We hope we can make a composition training at some point and go into it with greater detail, but those elements we just mentioned will help us in our upcoming lighting journey. Don't worry, we will come back to them many times so it feels natural. So now, we are approaching the coastline here. We can honestly say the Common Point Masterclass 3D Exterior Lighting starts here for real. We are going to share many technical tricks and the ways to perceive color to make the composition and lighting agreed with each other. We'll break down and make all the lighting scenarios step by step. Everything you see on the screen right now. We'll start with a huge block covering the day scenario. It's the most basic and important lighting scenario. We'll break it down to the smallest details in the upcoming seven lessons in total. You'll learn to work both with Corona Sun and Sky and HDRI. We'll jump between 3ds Max and Photoshop and describe the color correction process both in Corona Frame Buffer and Photoshop. We'll tell you how to introduce depth, add that realism and readability to your images, to choose a proper sun direction and how it influences the shapes, lines and depth. Also, there's lessons that only cover the color aspect, to train your eye, to build that internal color benchmark, what's the hues of greenery and the sky supposed to look like and how to adjust them. One interesting thing here is that we'll not cover the process of creating shaders from scratch per se, but rather adjusting and tweaking them, so it's viable in a commercial workflow. You know, lots of cool stuff. Seven lessons in total just to cover everything we know about the day scenario. Moving on, we'll touch base on the sunset lighting. We'll cover the emotional impact and potential issues both composition and material-wise. We'll change the way we approach it and what we consider to be a success. We need to be very careful with this scenario in terms of color, many traps to fall into. You'll see seemingly uniform surfaces and how to control them in a very sneaky way. There's a lesson where we use the negative space as well. We dive deep into the cloud selection and implement it in our rendering without any artifacts lots of ways to choose a perfect backplate. Then there's the overcast and another way to reprogram yourself to think about composition and lighting, a totally different lighting beast. There's no direct sunlight anymore and everything is flooded with light. So we need to have a different way to introduce the depth again and how we think about the shapes and lines in our composition. We'll introduce the idea of relight for the very first time and talk about color contrast. At this point, you should understand the color and lighting on a quite a deep level. We'll create two overcast scenarios and one of them kind of interesting, pretty sexy if you look at the works of different studios. Many tricks and exciting content to pull it off. Moving on, we touch the subject of nighttime renderings. Again, it's a totally different school of thought, where you add the lighting to each other. Start from the dark base and slowly introduce lights that make sense. 
another chance to reprogram the way you approach lighting. We'll go back to our composition, highlight the shapes and, and bleed the light towards the camera, starting from the interior and finishing on the landscape. You'll get a new way to do it step by step with full control. We'll introduce a new way to evaluate the potential of composition and how to think of color palettes. Lastly, we'll have a four lessons block covering volumetrics. At this point, you should have many tools to achieve a lot and so we can have some sort of free-flowing lessons. You'll play with the lighting, have some fun. Take a look at composition from a different angle than before, but we'll be equipped to articulate any ideas that comes along. If you dreamt of doing volumetric effect, we'll share a solid foundation to do so. We might get our machine steaming here, but we'll introduce a way to do it as efficiently as possible. Finishing off with a bang and introducing VDB objects, so-called season finale. So we hope you'll like it. Now, if you're watching this lesson on YouTube, we want to let you know there's even more content available alongside the entire 3D scene. Go to the link below to find out more, if any of this resonates with you. And if you're already bought an instant access to all the lessons, we want to thank you one more time for the support, we really appreciate it. Either way, if you're hungry for more, there are 8 more lessons where we dive strictly into tips and tricks and go deeper into specific aspects that we touched base in the training. They are 4 semi-short lessons where we go through additional subjects like hybrid lighting, acoustics, light mix and corona clouds. We go through all the necessary settings just to understand another compositional tool under your belt. And on top of that, uh, there are 4 long lessons where we dissect our most iconic images so far. We explain the geometric core, share all the lighting setup and discuss more advanced concepts that are unique for each and every one of them. That would be a great opportunity to revisit some old concepts and share some nuance with them. We jump into more advanced volumetric scenarios and show you an alternative way of building depth with it. And as a cherry on top of it, there's VDB and Corona Crowds on a brand new master grade level. All of this ahead of us and much more. We hope some of it already resonates with you though. We poured our hearts in this training and we are really proud of it. Lots of trial and error so you don't need to make the same mistakes we did in the past 10 years. We honestly believe it's going to make you a better 3D artist in one way or another. Ok, let's slowly wrap it up. We discussed the composition for the most part and gave you a sneak peek to what's coming up next. So to sum it up, what the lighting is all about, well, as we said, lighting is about many things, but there is a way to have it under control. You need to understand the way it connects to composition and reflects in color. You'll need both technical skills and an experienced eye to understand how to achieve something and when it looks good or not. And when should you start thinking about lighting? Well, again, from the very start, every image has a hidden potential and you need to set the stage for it. So we wish you a fantastic journey and see you in the next lesson.